Hey guys, this is Pastor Jerry, the Little Country Church in New Caney and Crosby. Uh, nine weeks ago, I got this email. Dear Pastor, I thought I'd fill you in on what's happening here. So a few weeks ago, I watched a video of some healthcare workers in New York who were working themselves to exhaustion. Mm. I immediately felt an overwhelming urge to help them. This push to go help was beyond anything I can explain. I felt like I had been given this skill set that is desperately needed right now. Now leaving my home, my job, my family, and stepping into what the media has deemed the epicenter of COVID-19 as is well beyond my comfort level. But there is a side of me that is yelling out for me to be obedient and go where I am needed right now. And wouldn't you know, without saying a thing, a recruiter called me about a position in New York City and my job started canceling people. I'm taking the hint and on Monday I am taking a leap of faith and heading to uh, NYU Winthrop Hospital to be help in their time of need. I'm not scared for myself. I have complete peace over this. I'm about to bring some Jesus to mm -hmm. New York City. Guys, this is Roxanne Berry's Ford. And nine weeks ago, I received this. We were doing the drive-in service. We prayed over you. We yeah. sent you out. And, uh, and now you're back. Yes. So, Roxanne, I'm going to ask you a few questions because a lot of people, they don't understand corona and COVID because we've been inundated by the media over and over and over. But you've been in a place. Uh, you, what hospital were you at? I was at NYU Winthrop. Um, hospital. Which is where? It's in Long Island, um, M Mineola, Long Island. Okay, H how many people does this hospital hold? Usually around 600, 650. And when you got there? Around a thousand. A thousand. Mm -hmm. They put a thousand. So would you say that all, uh, the, all of those were just people that were in the hospital, kidney problems, uh, a foot operation, this, that, and the other, or what? Um, no, every single person in there that I had in the entire hospital was um, COVID positive. So they were actually moving everybody else yes. out and bringing COVID positive yeah. in. Whew. So how many patients in nine weeks do you think you treated? Um, hundreds. I would say at least 300. Um, I would have around 10 um, critical care patients a day. Wow. That, that's amazing. So you're, you are a respiratory nurse. Right, respiratory therapist, yes. Therapist. Mm -hmm. And would you explain what that, what that means? So basically my job is anything that deals with breathing. So if you're having issues with, your, with breathing because of COPD, emphysema, asthma, um, bronchitis, pneumonia, anything like that, that's me. I, I'm the one who helps with that. Okay. Uh, Roxanne, was it as bad as the media made it out to be? Because um, they were making us feel down here that, that, I mean, literally the whole world were in this pandemic and... And, of course, New York, New York became, because of the, the, the governor, on every day, every day. And he's given the stats and where we're at. And it was pretty bad there. Um, I, I would say it's obviously subjective here in Texas. It wasn't nearly presenting like it was there um, at the epicenter of everything. And I think a lot of it had to do with uh, how congested, how close they were in proximity so to they each call other. that a hotbed? Mm -hmm. Correct. And that's because of? Just the closeness. Everybody's stacked in. Yeah. And, and out of the people that, and a lot of those people passed away, we know. Yes. Okay. Uh, Pre-existing? A uh, majority of my patients, I would say 90% or higher of my patients already had pre-existing conditions like, um, like COPD or congestive heart failure, you know, cancers, um, things like that, um, that were uncontrolled. So, so COVID it just adds a, a whole new level to anything that deals with respiratory. Correct, yeah. Yeah, so if you, you were struggling, then that thing hits you. What makes it so different than the common flu? Um, just kind of the way that it presents itself. It deals a lot more with um, oxygenating issues with the, with the body as opposed to um, the flu being more of a, I just don't feel good, muscle aches, chills, fever, things like that. It's just much harder to fix. Right, because so you told me some of those were in bed 30, 40, 60 days. Yeah, that's correct. I, uh, my last two weeks there, I had patients, because I'd been there, you know, weeks, um, had been there even before I had gotten there. So 67, 68, 9, 70 plus days on the vent, um, and they were still on life support when I left. So it wasn't looking great, but, you know, good things happen. Right. 
So you were there nine weeks, mm -hmm. and you before you came back from New York City, you had to be tested, and you were tested negative after Perfect. nine weeks of being in this hotbed, this cylinder of, of COVID, and you didn't get it. Right. Okay, so well, that's either the blood of Jesus, the, the grace of God, or you just were really... A fortunate in it was a good blend There's because a there were plenty of times where I was exposed. Yeah. When that circuit on you know when they're on life support they have they're connected to a circuit and that circuit would break when we're turning them and you know we're struggling to hurry up and but that's exposure. Yeah. I mean, in the like most extreme way because that's a hose to your face. Oh. Well, yeah. So so the death rate would be so high because of pre-existing. A lot of that has to do with pre-existing and even age factors and. Yeah. So I mean. You know, the only thing that's going to kill me is death. Right. You know, death is going to kill me. That, that's the only thing. I, yeah, no matter what, what happens, whether it be COVID or, or an accident or, or uh, cancer, is death is going to kill us. That's what's taking us out of here. So uh, a lot of people, but we were, we were told here over and over, we kept hearing that almost everything was COVID. Uh, you know, they died. Oh, as far as you, you, can, you can die with it or you can die from it. So a majority of my patients, um, yes, they did have COVID, but COVID may not necessarily have killed them, but they were still marking it as COVID if they had COVID. Okay. We won't go into the political yeah. because I heard there was even money added or th this, that, and the other. No, that's a fact. That if, you, if you were on life support um, with, with COVID, you, they, you got paid, the hospitals got paid more money. Okay. So, so it, was, it, was, uh, it would be detrimental to put anything other than COVID on that if they had it when they died. You know, I heard about a guy that was ate by an alligator, worst case of the COVID they ever heard of. Yeah. yeah okay, you've heard of all of those, I'm sure. Uh, population New York City is 8.5 million people. So there's 8.5 million people shoved into this city. Mm -hmm. How many homeless? Um, just in the city are between 60 and 70,000 people. That's, that's larger than most cities in America, mm -hmm. 60, 70,000 homeless. Mm -hmm. So would you consider that being the reason why it became such a hotbed? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the, uh, I mean, obviously, if you're homeless, you're not, you're not taking care of yourself um, as far as sanitizing, and you know, they're not walking around with masks on and hand sanitizer and showering even. So, absolutely, I would consider that a hotbed because they're touching everything. Roxanne, God's grace has been on you for years. How long have uh, I been your pastor? Fifteen years. Fifteen years. Okay, I wanted I wanted people to know that that are watching this today, because this is a unique thing. Uh, you, you're single mother, two, yes. two children, and I preached years ago that if you wanted a husband, get a pair of jeans, hang it over your bedpost, and pray and ask God to fill them jeans every night. Now, you took it to a different step. <laughs> you took a T-shirt and hung it over your bed, and you prayed and you asked God to fill that T-shirt. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay, I did, I did your wedding a mm -hmm. year ago, and uh, the young man, Chris, uh, Chris is a graduate from where? Baylor. Baylor University. He's a Baylor bear. Okay. Mm -hmm. You hung what kind of t-shirt over your bed? It was a Baylor t-shirt. You hung a Baylor t-shirt over her bed and God filled it with a Baylor man. I'm just saying, it may not work <laughs> for everyone, but it sure worked for you and Chris. What yes. a beautiful couple you two are. Love, Love Chris. You know, he's a he's personal one. trainer. He's helped me. I've lost 40 pounds in, since December. Awesome. So, yeah, and, and I'm working on it. He's mean, man. He, he stays on me about stuff like that. So I just want to throw that and just kind of caveat that. Uh, many heard the call for help. And I just mm -hmm. read, you make, you make connections there. Yes, absolutely. People yeah. that I'll never forget. And the word you used was obedience. Mm -hmm. You just felt that it was, and, and God kind of made a way and opened yeah. the doors. And, and if I, I felt like if I did not go, if I was not obedient, he was going to not ask me to do these beautiful things that I could. Come on. I had the opportunity to do, that I have the skill set to do. Right. So why not? And there was another word, peace. Mm -hmm. You had the peace to do it. Because you had to leave your husband and daughter here. Yeah, that wasn't easy. It, right. And then they finally came up, met with you, and mm -hmm. hung out with you, and, which mm -hmm. was, was a good thing. But uh, So when I, when, I, when I read about all the things that went on in that area, and we thought about you so much here at the Little Country Church, um, what was your work shifts? So um, generally, even at any hospitals, it's going to be 12 and a half hour shifts with like a 30-minute break um, during the day. And that's four times a week was what my contract um, was for so I was working quite a bit okay now you're in the hotbed of it and this is what we're hearing 
Uh, the CDC says in the beginning, there's no need to wear a mask unless you are have a need. Within six weeks, when I say need, that you're sick. Within six weeks, they're telling everybody to wear a mask. Mm -hmm. Then the WHO came out a week and a half ago and said, unless you're sneezing, coughing, and uh, fever, there's no need to wear a mask. If you're healthy, you don't need to wear a mask. Uh, I mean, you've not talked about this, but I know that you guys, you, you wore real masks. I wear bandanas, which are a little bit mm -hmm. different. You wear real masks. What's, what's the deal? Uh, what's your suggestion here? Um, I mean, stay at home if you're sick. Stay home if you're sick. <laughs> stay home if you're sick. Obviously, wash your hands, cover your mouth when you cough. When you cough. Yeah. Right, yeah. Don't I let mean, it that's going to be your biggest. Don't touch your face. Common sense. Yeah, it's, it's common sense stuff. Um, in, in a hospital where you're in 95 mask, I mean, that's going to be the most secure one that we have available for us. But, you know, even though we're using it over and over again. Okay. And that's, that's it. You're using the mask over and over because you didn't have other masks. Right. You, we talked about this. I have been to uh, restaurant after restaurant, and they're wearing gloves. They're wearing yeah. these little plastic gloves. And, and, and now I've gone to enough hospitals in, in over 30 years of ministry to tell you that every time a nurse leaves a, a hospital bed, she will take them gloves off, and then she goes to the next room, and she puts gloves on. But I'm seeing our, our restaurants, everybody's wearing gloves, they're coming out. They never take them gloves off mm -hmm. until they finish their shift. What's yeah. the deal with that? So, uh, that's just um, ignorance. Ignorance. I, I, I'm not calling people ignorant, but that's they just don't know maybe um, how detrimental that can be and how ineffective that can be is you're, you're using them as secondary hands. And so really you might as well just have the gloves off because you're touching everything and then your face and then other people's things. And you know, they're going yeah. table to table. Right, right. So what may have been at one is now at every table. At every touch. table. Yeah. So sanitizing your hands obviously or, or washing your hands in between is the most effective way. Gloves aren't doing anything. Gloves aren't doing anything. But, but the thing is, is people keep saying, well, it makes me feel safer to see you in gloves. It makes me feel safer to see you wearing a mask. Uh, but we're, out, we're actually uh, perpetrating fear. So how was the fear level inside the hospital versus what we keep hearing on the outside? I mean, you guys, boom. I mean, we were in it. You were in, in the it. chaos, in the midst of death and just despair. And, and that's, not, that's, that's not making it go down at all. Like, that was ex not extreme. It's how we felt. Um, but we weren't scared. Everybody went to work every single day and we gowned up and gloved up and masked up and we did what we needed to do. And there was no, if, if we got sick, then we dealt with it. But very rarely did we get sick. Yesterday was the first day they said that New York City had no COVID-19 deaths. So they've gone for over a thousand down to zero now. So it looks like it's dissipating. It's, it's, uh, yeah. What uh, a lot of people have died, and so there's not very many left to die, and I think that's what it is because we're not getting a lot of new cases in. Right. And so the people that have been on there for 40, 50, 60, 70 days. Well, then that brings days, us to another point. How contagious support. is this then? Because if, if all those who had it, uh, a lot of them have died, this thing's supposed to still be spreading pretty, pretty easily. Yeah, um, since the beginning of this, there's been so many things that have come out. This is new, this is new, this is new. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. It's new. We don't know if you can have it 14 days. Go home 14 days and it's the magic number. We don't know. Right. So a lot of things are said just to try to keep people away from one another. I think so. Just kind of distance and see how it affected everybody and how it's going to dissipate. Yeah, so there's controversy over the death count. Uh, just how many. We've, we're supposed to be at 100,000, uh, which is sounds like a lot. But you just mentioned there's 70,000 homeless in New York City. We forget mm -hmm. that there's... Uh, how many millions there are in America? Was it 350 million? Mm -hmm. Somewhere around that lot. area. So it's a lot of people. So it's kind of like it just was a bad flu. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've had N1H1 and Ebola. And Say that. SARS. Swine flu. Yeah, all of that wonderful stuff just since I've been a respiratory therapist. And the fear was there, and it just kind of disappeared. Roxanne, we want to thank you for... You're just stepping up, being obedient. I was shocked when I got when I got the email, you know, saying, Pastor, I'm, I want to go to New York City. I was going, whoa! You know, you, we, again, we've been together a long time. Uh, I've watched your family grow. You know, got to marry you and Chris. and so. Uh, but I had no fear of sending you. You know, in, in my life, 
with that, uh, our holy wild mantra, everything about mm -hmm. us is, hey, Jesus has got us. Do it afraid. Yeah, you do it afraid. Thank you. <laughs> we do it afraid. There's a lot of things in life we just do afraid. you got to do it, man. You can't just stay locked down forever. Yeah. Uh, I, I posted last week, better safe than sorry, really is, is not even a smart statement because, again, there is no safety in our species. Mm. And you kind of proved it in what you did. Any closing remarks? Um, not really, just... Um don't let the fear get to you. I mean, really, obviously, if we're if we're using standard precautions, we're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. um, and if you are one of those people that get sick easily, stay at home if you need to stay at home. But don't be afraid to go out and work and live. Right. Because it, it's sad oh, to I'll see that. that. Don't be afraid. Get out and live. Guys, one of the words I love what Roxanne said is obedience. You know, Abraham sought for a place that God told him, I'll show you when you get there. So he went looking for a place called, I'll show you when you get there. A mountain called that. He was just being obedient. All through scripture, when we're obedient, it, God says, you take the first step, and then I'll show you where you're going. Mm. So make sure you take that first step. Roxanne, I know what happened in your life is a memory you're never going to forget. Mm. You know, an opportunity that would never, it may never come back your way again. I, mean, I hope it doesn't. Uh, uh, yeah, me too. But I hope it sets you up for greater things. I think I believe that you hit a, 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 a ceiling and then you went above it, and now that ceiling is your floor. You're, you're moving to another level. The scripture says, line upon line, precept upon precept, from glory to glory, God moves us up. Mm -hmm. I've often said every level is another devil. You've got to mm -hmm. deal with it, you know, and I believe that God's, uh, you've done whoops and devils, and now you're moving mm -hmm. up to another one. Hey, this is Pastor Jerry and Roxanne Barrysford. We're glad you uh, tuned into this interview. Please share it. Please let other people know about it. I think this is useful information. We want you to live for God. We ask that God gives you success, and we pray that there be success in the kingdom of God. God bless you. We'll see you soon.